So I picked up a few guns. The first one is a rival charger. Um, supposedly it holds 12 rounds, shoots 100 feet per second. Uh, the reviews are a little iffy. Um, I got a 3.2 out of 5 uh, through Google and then a 4.2 out of 5 through Amazon. Uh, I picked this gun up for $3.99 and uh, I'm just going to see if it's worth the $3.99 price. I did have some issues. I made some videos um, taking it apart, trying to see and diagnose what the problem was. We found it and I made a little clip of that. Um, so, overall, it's not a heavy gun. It feels pretty good. I mean, it does feel pretty back heavy because all the batteries are back here. So, that kind of is a uh, negative for me, but at least you can rest it on your arm if you need it just to chill out for a second, which that's good. Um, so, I was looking up and doing some research of some of the pricing of this gun. Apparently it's like roughly about 35 bucks to buy it new. And then pre-owned you can get it for about 26 bucks, but with some of the issues I was dealing with and this being pre-owned, you're better off just buying a new one if you want want this gun. So, after fixing it, give it a little whirl. Shoots nice, shoots amazing. It's not super loud, which is nice. So for $3.99, it's definitely a deal for me. And the next one on the list is a Nerf Rival Artemis. Uh, pretty much it shoots 100 feet per second as well. But this one holds 30 rounds versus 12. That is probably the only negative I have to say for a motorized gun. It only shoots 12 rounds. Come on, man. Um, so, the reviews on this uh, through Google seem like it did a lot better. 4.7 out of 5, which is nice. Um, see, the used price, pre-owned price is around 25 30 bucks that I've seen on eBay. And that was under the sold listings. Um, new you can get it for 50 bucks on Amazon, which is, uh, seems a little steep for a gun like this. Um, but let's go ahead and give it a try. Oh, wow. Jesus. Alright, I think I'm going to stop right there. Um, what I have to say... It seems a lot more powerful than this Nerf Rifle Charger. Oh. Uh, for not being motorized, it, it definitely uh, is pretty powerful. Uh, I kind of recommend this one more. Get your money worth. Especially 30 rounds, so you have a little time to play around with. That's nice. So, honestly, man, I really, I def I'd recommend this one over the Charger. Get you an Artemis. And then, oh yeah, this was also $3.99. So, that's definitely worth it to me. And the only complaint issue I had with this gun um, is because of the previous owner. 
Uh, I guess they decided to shoot like a mega dart out of it, but it only took about three or four minutes to unjam it, which that wasn't a big problem. That's nice. And then last on our list is the Nerf Rival Apollo. This is honestly not my favorite rival gun. Um, I'm sorry if I offended anybody by saying that, but I went through so many of them and it's just like this part just wants to jam up and it's really hard to cock back so if you have you know a young kid that's trying to get into the nerf game um i think it's just it's going to be just a little too tough so um yeah i don't know just I only got this because I think it seriously only cost me, I have to say, about 55 cents because this is one of the Nerf guns that was paid by the weight. So at 55 cents, I'm not going to say no, but it does fire with a lot of kick as well. So if you can get over the, you know, cocking that back. I say it'd be a, a decent starter gun. So, at a dollar, I do recommend it. Uh, anything more than ten bucks for this gun, I wouldn't recommend it. Probably just keep it at a solid five dollars here and there. I mean, there's there's many of them. You'll you'll be able to find it for like five dollars and under. So. After testing these three guns, I think the Artemis definitely wins. This this is actually pretty awesome. Like I said, go thrift shopping, go yard selling. You can definitely find them a lot cheaper than the Amazon and eBay price. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a good one. Alright guys, so this is the Nerf Rival Charger, and I was having some complications with it. Um, first problem was, bobby pins were jammed, like seriously, in the system itself, so it wouldn't spin. And, I don't know, I guess the gun wasn't recognizing uh, the uh, right set of voltage to even have the gun on. So, since I got the casing apart, unjammed it with these bobby pins. I don't understand why it's in there, but it was. Um, made sure I checked the voltage uh, on the batteries itself. So, 1.5 volts per battery. And we should get a reading of about 9 volts, because there's 6 of them. And as soon as you can find some decent contact within the wires close to 9 volts so that means that's good and uh, if you ever want to diagnose if this was an issue or if this was an issue it's just pretty much kind of cut into the wire um, and uh, put the ground and then the hot where you uh, kind of cut the wire say if I want to make sure this works um, Obviously, I would hit it. It's working, so there's no cutting need needed. But say if it wasn't working, and you had this tested, it was showing nine volts, and then that means the next step is to kind of trace this piece. Um, so, like I said, if you want to see if that was working or not, just kind of just cut into the wire just right after to see if you get any both this reading and then for my assumption it should be a 9 volt system with the 6C batteries and if it's reading um, 12 volts that means this thing is getting power and of course it's getting power but that's that at least it's working I'm gonna slap it back together so I can finally test these guns out